Hey there, Phoenix Consciousness. How are you all doing this Saturday? I hope that your 2020 is off to an amazing start and uh, that you're having a fabulous weekend. This is Tabitha Jane coming to you this evening and I just wanted to see if we could initiate a conversation. And I, because you know, right now it's all one-sided, I'm gonna share with you some of my thoughts. Um, like the last few weeks, I've really been hit hard with information about narcissists, about empaths, and about healing. And for whatever reason, I feel like this is really relevant to share. And so I'm going to share with you some of my insights and thoughts, and I'd love to hear um, what you guys think. What are your thoughts? So, you know, again, creating a dialogue, a discussion where we actually can learn from each other. Because what I get from what I hear, you, something different may resonate with you. So anyways, I've got, I've got a few different thoughts. I'm going to start with empaths because... And I guess, you know, we'll start with empaths and then we'll start with, we'll go to narcissists, but both of them, I'm going to tie in healing. So hopefully this makes sense to you guys. But again, I'd like to hear your feedback. So empaths, you know, um, I didn't know I was an empath. <laughs> I had no clue. You know, I grew up the way I grew up. And for some of you, this may, you know, be your truth as well, where you're just really sensitive. You're, you're teased a lot. I was always told I was like, took everything to heart. I wear my heart on my sleeve that I made a mountain out of a molehill. Um, if I wasn't anticipating other people's needs, then I was on a high horse. I, uh, was a snob. I um, totally was rude to other people. I, I was made to feel growing up like I couldn't win. And what I didn't understand was being really sensitive, especially in my environment. I was born into a very narcissistic environment. So that was my norm. And what I have since learned is that when we are exposed to trauma, I mean, things that like really, really have the potential to shatter, to fragment, to severely detrimentally change us that we have defense mechanisms that come into play different coping mechanisms and I mean some of these may resonate with you where like what is it called? Um, dissonance. Where you just no longer associate with your environment. It's almost like, in a way, you kind of like live in your own head. Um, or you choose, this was mine, I, I chose to see what I wanted to see. And the rest of it I had to dismiss because I couldn't cope with the rest. I literally couldn't cope with the abuse. I couldn't cope with the neglect. I couldn't cope with the verbal abuse. I couldn't cope with the, um, you know, I just couldn't. And then, you know, there are different, we all have different experiences. Some of us have sexual abuse, which again, uh, you know, we, we, we wind up distancing ourselves. and. The, the more we experience these different 
hardships, these life traumas, the more that um, we shield intuitively. We don't even know we're doing it. We're children. We're just surviving. Um, another thing that I learned with empaths, especially who have grown up in very traumatic environments, which really I don't know any empath who hasn't, <laughs> um, is that they shut down their heart. Um, this is a weird one for me to try to explain. I've tried to put it in words for others, and I don't, I, I, maybe this makes sense to you. I still feel the energy of others. I still know what their intentions are. I just instinctively know things. And I didn't know how I knew it. I didn't know what it meant. It just, I just knew. But when it comes to having a, a personal relationship, a, a very um, a deep relationship with me, I don't feel. And even though I love and I care and I give, which is, that's where it's kind of weird. It's like, I give and I, I deeply feel for the other person. I just am, am not able to receive. And, um, oh, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> what I have found is that that's another... <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> that's a that's a coping mechanism because you know you're you're so sensitive and you are so hurt by you know your environment, your family, um, circumstances, or whatever that you literally shut down, and that's how you protect yourself. But the other thing I've learned about empaths, this is a brand new one, and I'm I'm learning more about it is. A lot of us are wounded, not even knowing when the wounded part is like big duh, but we don't know how to empower ourselves. We don't know how to heal ourselves because actually we have incredible gifts as empaths. We just, society, you know, in generations, decades, centuries has not been geared towards fostering the sensitivities and cultivating the natural love because it's about it's been about dominance and power so I am learning about healing and empowering stepping into my power and some things I've actually kind of accidentally stumbled into which, like, they're, like, seriously cool. <laughs> seriously. And I'll share those with you guys another time. But I wanted to um, bring that to you about um, empaths. And before I totally get off track, because you guys know I do. <laughs> um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, narcissists and healing. And some of the things that I'm really struggling with. Okay. I hear so many people demonize narcissists. Well, I, I mean, maybe I just, because my whole life I've been around narcissists. Oh, there's a lesson. But because the whole reason I've been around, um, I've been, my whole life I've been around narcissists, I actually really do empathize with them. I don't think that they're villains. I don't think that they are heartless. I don't think that they are out there targeting, stalking, trying to cut others down by design. Now, um, this isn't something I hear other people speak about. So, you know, you guys take it however you want. And you can call me out however, whatever way you want. Because, again, the whole point is to have a dialogue and a discussion. And to have that exchange of ideas so that we can grow together. But, honestly, I mean, I've known a lot of narcissists. I didn't know what it was until recently. But, yeah. And 
they are very self-centered and they very, are very egocentric. They are, they can't see beyond themselves. I will, I will give every definition out there that I will full on in, in their own way, every narcissist that I've, because none of them are the same, but I can definitely share that, you know, with all validity and, and, and sincerity. Yes, they are very, very egocentric. But they're also very wounded. And each one loved as much as they were capable of in their own way. So do I think they go out there like the big bad wolf, big bad wolf um, stalking Red Riding Hood in the forest as she, you know, innocently goes about her business trying to take her basket of goodies to grandma? No, I don't. So this is the lesson. Um, what, this is again something I just most recently learned, but I do find a lot of validity in this. The empath and the narcissist are attracted to each other because they both have a lesson. They both have healing that needs to occur, occur and it comes through the connection between the two parties. Because until the narcissist heals, he can't stop being a narcissist or she can't stop being a narcissist. Because that's, their world is them. And until the empath heals, the empath can't stop just giving, 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 giving without setting boundaries or limits. Or, you know, really going within. They're so busy looking outside at others' wounds. I'm super guilty of this. You're so busy going outside of look, at looking at other people's wounds and trying to heal them and help them. You never self-reflect. Which, again, that's another thing a narcissist doesn't do is self-reflection. So, I'm not really sure why these things are coming to me so intensely, so strongly. Other than... You know, as hit as has been what I've done now. I mean, if you go on my my personal profile, Tabitha Jane on Facebook, you will see I've been for what over a year sharing with you guys different insights, different um, understanding, different concepts as they come to me because I, I do believe there's value and I do believe I'm not the only one who can benefit and that's why I share what was the other thing I hate it when that happens when something just it, it slips in and slips right out there was something it seems like there was something else I was supposed to share with you about the dynamics between the empath narcissist guys can't remember what I will do though is um, as I'm learning more about this stuff and you know I I did a, an article on my blog well I, I shared it I think on this page too um, Phoenix consciousness my, my blog um, Phoenix Phoenix consciousness .com. Eight traits that narcissists and empaths have in common, um, and and since I wrote that, I've I've actually learned even more. So, I'll be I'll be sharing more about that. But I just really have to wonder, and maybe maybe I'm just really naive. And again, you guys can call me out on it, but. I've known narcissists my whole life and no I don't like what they do and no I don't yes they are hurtful people but if you go past the surface and look deeper I see them just as wounded and and narcissism so okay like I was saying earlier as an empath where I shut down my heart, right? And I projected, I only saw what I wanted to see in the world. That was my survival technique as a child. I chose a different path. 
Well, if I hadn't chose that path, would I have been a narcissist? Well, if I had totally turned inward and that's, I just decided, you know what? I don't care about anybody else. I'm only going to care about me and frick the rest of the world. Is it really that different? So I guess I just want to um, bring this to you guys. Again, I don't really know what all this means other than I just really, really strongly feel the we need to have an awareness we need to have an understanding we need to be compassionate and just by not judging but accepting not approving <laughs> okay <laughs> Because it's not good either way. Shutting yourself off like I did, that's not healthy. That's not healthy. Where, you know, I can feel others' energies and I can tell what your intentions are. And, like, I get blindsided sometimes, with, especially if I'm in a relaxed state. And all of a sudden, I was like, what the? Where did that come from? It's someone in my vicinity. So... You know, but shutting myself off interpersonally, that's not any better than the person who just goes inside and decides that the whole world revolves around them and nobody else really matters, even though they do love and care. But yeah, only to their benefit. One isn't better than the other. I just, I don't think so. And I think healing is the key. Compassion is the key. And getting understanding and sharing you know helping each other have an awareness and how do we start the healing process i'll be sharing that with you guys more in time as i have a better grasp of it but i'm definitely definitely working towards being empowered and bringing that to you guys so that we can grow together and I do believe healing is the key for all of us. So again, I'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback. Sorry, I'm, this is kind of a rambly video, but I just like, I don't know who to talk to. I don't know who to share with and I'd really love to hear your feedback and thoughts because I'm trying to put pieces of a puzzle together in my own mind and I'm struggling and um, all right, guys, hope you have an amazing rest of your week, and I will talk to you soon. Love and light. And, um, yeah, I look forward to your thoughts. All right, guys, bye.